Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going tubeless easy. What? Tubeless easy? Yes, there is such a thing when we build the tubeless easy wheel mounting jig. Your back's going to thank me. Your bike's going to thank me. Your mom's carpet, she's going to thank me too. So, let's get to it. I'm all about winging it, but uh, for this type of work you need a plan. I've got a plan, so let's go over the plan and see what we need. Okay, you're probably wondering why go through all this other than to save the back. Well, the fact is with the skinnier road tire or gravel tire, the beads tend to pop off when the bike's resting on the ground and you're trying to get the, the tire seated. And then it just ends up making a mess and there's sealant and everything all over the place. It, it, it sucks, trust me. And the other thing is turning the bike upside down to do it, it, it doesn't make sense to me if it's an older bike. Often there's air in the lines and that can really mess up the braking and... Yeah, it's going to fall over. Last time I did that, it fell over and almost scratched something terrible. Okay, let's go over the parts list. Simpson Strong Tight A66 angle iron bracket from Home Depot. Mark it here and here. That's where you're going to cut it with the angle uh, grinder with a cutoff wheel or a hacksaw. Whatever you've got. You're going to need a leg screw. It's 5 16 with a washer inch and a half long. You're going to need a 7 32nd drill bit for that. You're going to need a 7 16th drill bit in order to drill for the 12 millimeter through axle and that's going to tap itself into the block of wood. The block of wood is going to be a 4x4 cut off from a construction site, a fencing job, or a heavier pallet like ones used for masonry or stone tiles which you can get for free. Um, to secure it to a bench or countertop, a large screw, like this LOK Timberlock screw from Home Depot, GRK also makes them, or a C-clamp, wood clamp, will also be suitable. So let's uh, put it together now. If you don't have a vise like I do, simply bolt the angle iron to the piece of wood and then clamp that to the bench, then it'd be a lot easier to use your hacksaw. Two pieces, one for a friend, why not? Two for one. So you're going to want to just file that over or sand that down because it'll be quite sharp. I'm going to drill the holes, put the screws in, and then I'm going to show you how it works. So I did add a hole here. It's just a little bit of insurance um, against pivoting. Now you're going to want to drill a perpendicular hole for the through axle. You can use a block of wood to help guide you and make it straight. Okay, so for the last step what we need to do is we need to tap this hole with the through axle. And we want to keep it perpendicular and as straight as possible. So you can use a block of wood to help and check as you're going through. I have a lot of drill bits so I actually drilled a hole slightly bigger and I'm going to use this block of wood as my my guide. You can see it's just a little bit bigger and I'm going to just cheat like that and that's all you have to do. You probably can't see but and it's now tapped and that's going to hold your wheel secure. But anyways, this is the setup and this is just a regular quick release wheel. So you can see for now though, it uh, works perfect. And it'll hold it there while you um, go about your business. And then for the through axle here, same kind of deal. Just make sure you align it up nicely and gently. Turn it in. Take a couple minutes to get it all the way in, but uh, there you go. You know, it's just an ideal way to work on it and set it up. And these rims are ready to get back in action after I just changed the bearing. So uh, the other thing is you just have to watch the clamp and make sure it's on the right side. But that's a minor inconvenience. So there you have it. 
uh, make yourself one of these very ugly but functional um, tubeless easy blocks. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching and uh, right on.